Good evening, I'm your host Camilia and you're watching Kini News. Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has announced the formation of Gerakan Tanah Ae, a loose political group which he will lead that aims to go against AMNO in the 15th general election. Pajong Chairperson Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has announced the establishment of a new political alliance. The group, named Gerakan Tanah Air, consists of Pajong, the National Indian Muslim Alliance Party, Parti Bumi Putra Perkasa Malaysia, or Putra, and Berjasa. In a press conference today, Mahade said they would also invite academics, NGOs, and professionals to join. Mahade said the movement was formed in order to change the government, and they would contest in 120 parliamentary seats in the next general election. While the movement is exclusively for the Malays and Bumi Putra, he added that it will also fight for the interests of all races. Kita menjemput cuma orang Melayu saja. Orang Melayu saja akan dijemput. Bukan kerana kita perkawaman, tidak. Tetapi kerana usaha kita tertumpu untuk melawan sebuah parti Melayu yang telah menyeleweng, iaitu AMNO. Untuk lawan dengan AMNO, kalau kita bukan parti Melayu, orang Melayu tak akan sokong. Mahade has been appointed as the chairperson of the movement, while Perjuang President Mokris Mahade is one of the deputy chairperson. The other three deputy chairpersons are Berjasa President Zamani Ibrahim, Putra President Ibrahim Ali, and Iman President Muhammad Mosin Abdul Raza. PKR has a new leader for its federal territories chapter. Anwar Ibrahim has assigned Rafizi Ramli as the new head of the chapter. PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli has been appointed as the party's new Federal Territory State Leadership Council chairperson. Meanwhile, PKR Vice President Amiruddin Shari was appointed as the party's Slango State Leadership Council chairperson. This was announced by PKR President Anwar Ibrahim following a joint meeting of Slango and Federal Territory's PKR branch chiefs yesterday evening. In a post on Facebook, Anwar said that all PKR branch chiefs at the meeting had agreed to the appointments. The meeting was held to finalize the appointment of the new State Leadership Council chairpersons. Anwar added that he believed the appointments can help to expedite the party's preparedness to face the 15th general election. Just hours after his announcement, Anwar said that he had also assigned Rafizi to lead Johor PKR. Aminuddin Harun was also assigned as the head of two state party chapters. PKR President Anwar Ibrahim has announced that PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli and Negri Sembilan PKR Chief Aminuddin Harun will each be leading two state party chapters. In a statement last night, Anwar announced that Rafizi had been appointed as the head of Johor PKR. This came just several hours after he assigned Rafizi as the new head of Federal Territories PKR. Anwar also announced that he was retaining Aminuddin as the head of Negri Sambilan PKR. In addition, Aminuddin will also lead the party's Malacca chapter. The state chapter head is a significant position because it will have some influence on the choice of election candidates. Party members are unable to elect their state chapter head. However, the convention is for the party president to choose the candidate after consultation with elected PKR division heads. Zahid Hamidi has again publicly pressed Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob to hold a fresh general election. This time, he gave three reasons on why it should be held. UMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has explained why he believes Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob should dissolve parliament and call for a general election. In a statement today, he said a general election should be held as soon as possible, and this is based on three core reasons. He said the first was as AMNO and BN have to be dominant in the government again, so that all party decisions can be implemented in the government in a timely manner. Zaid gave an example of the employee provident fund withdrawals as one of the decisions, saying that it had been delayed despite the party pushing for it. He said the second reason was based on the need for political stability. Zaid said that when there is political stability, then focus can be given to issues concerning the rakyat. He cited the demand by Bersatu for the Deputy Prime Minister post as an example of political instability, 
saying that the demand came despite GE15 having to be held in less than a year. The third reason, he said, was to strengthen Malaysia's economic development. According to Zaid, more integrated policies and action is needed to bring the country out of economic uncertainty, and all this requires a strong and stable government. He added that if the election is delayed, it would in turn delay all these three matters which are interrelated. Previously, Ismail Sabri had hinted that GE15 may be held earlier. This came after he faced pressure to call for elections from several AMNO leaders. The Public Service Department has responded to allegations of verbal abuse by its Director General during an incident at KLIA yesterday. The Public Service Department has denied allegations that the Director General of Public Services, Muhammad Shafiq Abdullah, had uttered abusive remarks against an immigration officer at Kuala Lumpur International Airport on Wednesday. In a statement this morning, PSD said the allegation was baseless, malicious, and intended to tarnish the image of the Public Service Department Director General. The department added that it viewed the allegations as serious and recommended proper investigation to be conducted by the relevant quarters. In its statement, the PSD said Mohammad Shafiq had scolded the immigration officer for not following the stipulated practices and procedures on travellers leaving the country. They claimed the immigration officer concerned did not check his travel documents as well as that of other members in the delegation. The department also denied that the immigration officer was berated in public. The incident reportedly took place on August 3rd between 8.40 a.m. and 9.40 a.m. at the departure hall of KLIA. Yesterday, it was reported that a KLIA immigration operations head had been scolded in public because no immigration officer was stationed at the VIP room counter when the high-ranking government official arrived there. Following the allegations, Home Affairs Minister Hamza Zainuddin has instructed the Immigration Department to investigate the matter. After a long campaign to introduce the Hudud Law, PAS has indicated that its efforts on the amendment of Act 355 will soon have a happy ending. Clanton Exco member Muhammad Fadzli Hassan said efforts by PAS to amend the Sharia Court's Criminal Jurisdiction Act 1965, or Act 355, will soon have a happy ending. He said this at a forum in Kota Baru yesterday in response to a question from a member of the audience. Muhammad Fadzli, who is also a Clanton Pass Deputy Commissioner, said a minister had informed the party of this matter. He also addressed criticisms against Pass of not being as outspoken compared to when the party was in the opposition. He added that in the past, as the opposition, the party could only hold rallies to lobby for the Act 355 Amendment Bill because it was not in the government and did not have power. As a part of the government now, he said they no longer had to hold rallies because they are in power. According to Muhammad Fadzli, the federal government is currently trying to harmonize Sharia law and civil law. He said, there are many changes that need to be made apart from Act 355. A Bersatu member has claimed that his sacking as the party's associate member's wing information chief post is invalid. Bersatu had sacked its associate member's wing information chief, S. Gobi Krishnan, yesterday night after the insolvency department declared that he is bankrupt. However, Gobi Krishnan said today that his purported removal was invalid because it did not follow due process. He told Malaysia Kini that this was as the wing's leadership was only a pro tem committee and therefore cannot make unilateral decisions on its membership. He said Bersatu's rules stipulated that only the party's disciplinary board had the authority to take action against party members. He added that he would file a complaint against the wing's chief with the party secretary general and disciplinary board. Gobi Krishnan did not respond to allegations that he was declared bankrupt by the insolvency department on January 7, 2021. Yesterday, Bersatu's associate member's wing had announced Gobi Krishna's removal from all party positions in view of his insolvent status, which was revealed by Federal Territory's MIC Deputy Chairperson D. Pala Kumaran. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. 
If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.